Hi, it's Rich with Rich Bound Photography, Sacramento, California, and I wanted to welcome you to a tutorial that has been asked by several people over the years that I do this tutorial. Now, it's kind of self-indulgent, and it may be a little long and boring for you, but it is the, the process of taking a complete shoot and editing it from beginning to end. And I'm not going to be teaching how I'm editing. I'm just going to be showing you exactly what I'm doing in my process. I'm taking all the images are straight out of camera. I've already shot this and edited this already. So I'm kind of a little ahead of the game. But trust me, it'll take me a good 30 minutes, maybe 40 minutes to edit this house. And uh, I'm supplying quite a few images for this. But I think I can do it quickly and show you how it's done. So sit back and check it out and let's see if I can succeed keeping this under like 45 minutes. So you can watch a part of this, part of it later, and don't watch it at all if you're going to be bored because I might get bored watching it too. But I hope that this will be perfect for some of you out there. So thanks a lot. Sit back and we're going to go right into Lightroom. Okay, so we're in Lightroom right now and let me get right to it again. This is not to show you each and every step as I always do in my videos, but this is rather to just show you how I'm going to edit a full shoot. And though I take a lot of photos, this may not be what you do. This is just happens to be what I do and works for me. So I have applied a full bump to or a uh, the special sauce to all my images. And I'm just going to go and when I get to an ambient image, like an interior ambient image, um, I am going to possibly um, go to the ambient yellow out preset, which will be a little bit different. I don't want to get into that today. This is strictly to show you my full edit. So let me just get going and I'll try to talk as I'm as I'm going. OK, so I'm going uh, just to do a real quick, real quick edit. There we go. I'm going to uh, lose this garbage can on the left and make it a little tighter bring it in a little bit here and i'm not going to deal with any perspective corrections or sky replacements i put a three there because i'm finished with it go to the next image i'm also not going to show you me going into doing i'm doing all um keystroke uh hotkeys to do all of my uh, editing layers in photoshop so let's just go here it's okay. I don't get real fancy. I want to take out some of the neighbor's house and that garbage can again. This is good. So there I go. And here I like to do several different images uh, here. And I might do a real quick adjustment here. Um, let's go to my vertical correction. There we go. And constrain crop. Bam. Three. Let's go there. Exterior shots are a great way to um, really get in a lot of shots real quickly. So, um, you know, you can make up some time with um, exterior shots. So as uh, if you're only doing 25 images, you might want to uh, think of, you know, doing 19 interiors. And then um, you can add on padded, I call. You can pad it with uh, ambient shots uh, of the exterior there, I just I like to show the corners because this is a corner house and I think it's important for them to see that the property goes around the corner. I actually had an agent get mad at me once uh, for that. Okay, so let me I have never edited completely with talking, so it's probably going to screw me up. But um, there we go. Yeah, close enough. Okay, and I'm going to you know what? I'm going to skip a few things probably. Um, not spend quite as much time on my um, on this edit because it's it's just for you guys. Okay, I went way back here with my 16 foot pole and I did it from afar to show them they're on a green belt and you can uh, get a shot away from here like that, which is really valuable for the uh, potential buyer to see. Bring it in a little closer. The 16 foot pole is awesome. Okay, it really uh, helps with this perspective right here. Okay, and um, sometimes I might do sky replacements here, but um, I didn't today, and I'm not in this video. And then I do a little closer shot of the house, which is like this, and I'm just going to auto-align it real quick. 
There we go. Okay, now let's get into the house. Okay, I always do, usually the ambient shot I want, ambient shot is to the first, because I shoot it first, and my flash shot is second. So I'm just going to go here, and my ambient is fine. I'm going to put a one star next to it. The flash shot, I'm just going to bring down in exposure a little bit. I'm using the new 6400 camera, so I'm not sure of my calibration regarding exposure on my iPad. So I'm I'm trying to go a little bit by the histogram, but it's a kind of drawn out process. You got to get used to what your camera looks like on your screen. You got to calibrate your screen, and um, you've got to you've got to know what to put it at. Some cameras are different. My A6000. I used to always put my iPad down half exposure because uh, that came out better. Now I find with my A7 III, I can put it full exposure on my iPad, and then um, it will show me more of a true representation. Same thing with my 6400. I think I'm going to put it at full, and uh, when I take it, it'll be better. Okay, let me just... I don't know why my layers palette has not been opening up. I'm also editing on a new um, MacBook Pro here. So I don't know why uh, I keep having to bring up my layers palette. Okay, so I'm just highlighting these both, and I'm doing a hot key for. Um, I've done a. I just did a video on this, how to program your uh, keys to do your uh, auto align and uh, edit as layers in Photoshop. So just basically, I'm going to do let my um, flash shot here, and I'm going to go here, and I'm going to stop talking for a minute because I, it's harder than I thought. Okay, get rid of that problem right there. And you're probably okay with me not talking. There we go. Okay, I got a little bit of uh, orange here, but that's okay. I'm not worried about it. Okay, so I'm going to bring it back into Lightroom. You can see how quickly. And I tell people um, your speed. And then I put a three next to it so I know that that's the final image. Uh, I let people know that... Um, if you get a better ambient shot, you're going to have better luck um, uh, with your uh, speed. If you get a better flash shot, good luck, much better luck with your speed. I'm going to go ambient yellow out here. It's a preset. Um, I don't think I've ever done it in my YouTube videos, but you can see it right here if you want to use it. Or you can also uh, purchase it uh, at the Shooting Spaces Dot net website but uh, again I have always said presets are easy to make so no real reason to um, to really pay for them but a lot of people find it intimidating to have to deal with it so uh, and I just did a hot key to make it go as layers into Photoshop so I recommend checking out that new video okay just highlight that do uh, auto align okay and I'm just going to, and a lot of people can look at my flash shot like here. I could probably deliver that, but I'm not going to deliver that. So let's go real quick here. And I'm going to be trying to make it quick here. So I might be missing some things. So don't send me a message. Oh my God, you missed something. So, um, you know, give me some slack here. I'm just trying to show you all the images I'm shooting. That was showing you also how quickly it is to... Um, edit an image uh, as layers in Photoshop, okay? Now, another thing, too, is I did this composition here, and I changed something here. I moved the table. I moved the uh, the lamp on the table. So I knew that I wanted to be in the middle of the shot to let me know that there's a problem. Don't use this shot with one of these shots. I also had another issue I didn't realize till later. Let me see this. Now, that's good. Okay, so I'm doing this ambient shot. And I'm just going to bring that down a little bit. Okay. And again, I am not uh, doing... Um, actually, here it is what I wanted to use. I actually changed things again, too. So I'm going to use this image. And uh, wait a second. Something changed. I don't even know what I did to change it. So you know what? I'm just going to go... Never mind that. I'm just... I have to... See, when you start dealing with layers, you're going to have to figure these things out when you make it changes or something. Okay, so I'm going here, ambient, and then I'm just going to go to this one. And I'm going to go bring it as layers in Photoshop. And I'm going to also not auto-align layers for the rest of this video. 
which uh, will cut out a little bit of time uh, for the video. But you know that I do now auto-align my layers where I didn't used to do it in, in my videos. Let's go right here. Okay. Give a little bit of um, shadow love in here. There we go. There we go. Get a little ambient in there. We had window problems there, so I um, I think I blew out the windows for the final uh, detail, the final delivery because the agent was worried about the windows. Okay, let's go to three here. Now let's go to this shot. Okay, flash shot here. And I could actually deliver this, but I want to get rid of that uh, shine there. And I'll put a one next to here. And then I'm going to edit in. I'm just going to do it like this again to show you. Open as layers in Photoshop. I hope you're not getting too bored. So listen, I've got time now to tell you to please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I'm doing this video because I posted in some of the groups, the Facebook groups. And I will say Facebook groups are a great place to hang out and learn from. But um, I found that people really thought that this video would be the most important. So let me just get rid of that uh, shine there. Oops. Get rid of the, the shadow from the light. A little bit of ambient there. Okay. And I'm just exposing for the window there. You don't need to do window pulls. Window pulls are not something you want to do. Window pulls are for when you need to do them because it's the only way you can capture the dynamic range. So dynamic range is basically the difference between light and dark. And this is a pretty good flash shot. Uh, you can see me. I'm in the in the reflection here. Uh, I got a little bit of flash on the ceiling. I got a flash. I got a little bit of light there, too heavy, a little bit dark in there. So I'm just going to do that one. And I'm going to do this one. Nope, I'm going to go down to here. Oh, I moved. Yo, look at that. I know what I did. I moved from this one to this one. I moved um, I moved the, uh, the props. So important for me, I didn't put a little divider in there. And again, I'm still getting used to the exposure on my um, A6300. But I want some ambient light back there. So that's good back there. Okay, and let's go here, edit in. Open as layers in Photoshop. I'm forgetting to use my hotkeys. So the hotkeys are a great way to save a second or two each image. And um, overall, over a year, I mean, we could do the math. What is uh, 35 images times two seconds, like four seconds? And you'd be surprised how much it will it will help you. Bring a little ambient to there. Bam. Get rid of my reflection in the mirror, in the TV. Go up there. Bam. And this actually video is good for you to see because it's showing you how fast and easy. Actually, I didn't like that. Let me go X out of here. Okay. There we go. So my ambient shots are a little bright here, but I'm showing you how fast and easy it is. And I'm going to just crop out this. I don't know what this is in the top right hand corner. I think that's my light. So I will bring this down and just bring it here. Bring it here. And I'm not fixing my uh, verticals. Uh, oh, I also found out my L bracket, my really right stuff L bracket on my um, 6400, which is the L bracket was for the 60, the 6000. It doesn't fit right. So I had a lot of vertical issues. So it's something to think about. Um, you got to get the right L bracket for the right body. So, okay, let's go here. Okay. Perfect here. Let's get the right ambient exposure. Let's do the yellow out. Get a little closer. There we go. So I'll tell you, I probably spent more time on the final delivery, but I didn't want to make a video that was going to be an hour or 45 minutes. And I, I want to go as quickly as possible. So, and I don't even know how fast. I didn't do a clock on here, but I'll know how fast this video was so I can know how long it actually takes me to do this. Oops, what am I doing? Okay, let's go out here. Oops, oops, uh, what am I doing? Oh, got to do X to reveal. Okay, 
Okay, let's just do in here. Okay. Not perfect, but you know what? Quick enough. So when people see me do these videos and go, oh, how in the world am I going to do all this masking and layering? It doesn't take a lot of time. Eh, it's just uh, the way I have done it. And I will say you will get faster and more used to it. Okay. But for me, it's pretty darn fast and easy. Let's go ambient yellow out. Again, my exposure's way up on these. I've got to figure it out. So let's go here and let's go edit in. Oh, you know what? I don't think this is the one I want. I think this is, nope, that's a light down in the hallway. Let's see here. I don't know what happened here. You know what? Ah, oh, golly. I don't know what I did here. So you know what I'm going to try and do? I'm just going to try and... This is a flash exposure. I don't think the other one was a flash exposure. Okay. And let's take the ambient exposure down there. Edit in. And the flash exposure is good to get your colors better. These are a little orange. This house is kind of orange. And the, ha the walls are not white. Uh, they're off-white. So, uh, you know, cut me a little slack on the on the white balance of this video. So come on, what's going on? Okay, what is taking so long? Wow, this new MacBook Pro is pretty uh, tricked out, but I don't think it's as fast as my desktop. Okay, let's go here. There we go. Okay, I'm good there. Let's go back to uh, Lightroom and put a three there. Okay, let's go here and get the flash shot. Oh, wait. Oh, I know what happened. I screwed that whole one up, so never mind. <laughs> I don't want to go into it. I'm only a guy with a camera, so I don't know what to tell you. Okay, here is my um, ambient, sh my flash shot. The only thing I need a little bit of love is over there. So I'm here. I'm just going to do get the ambient yellow out. Bring it down a little bit. There we go. Okay. Let's edit it in. Oh, I did this again. It's force of habit. I for keep forgetting to use the, the keystroke. You know, I used to use the um, scroll wheel in my Logitech mouse. But I can't figure out how to get it to work in this new Logitech mouse I have and my my new uh, MacBook Pro. So, And again, the only thing I'm really not doing here is I am not, um, I am not auto aligning my layers. So you want to be sure to do that because no matter, even with my beefy Manfrotto 3046, I have problems with alignment too. Okay, so there you go. Pretty quick. So I'm literally taking 10 seconds on each um edit in photoshop so and i haven't really spent time going through um this shot so let me go through this shot okay i've got a light by camera probably a 360 i've got a light behind this wall back here probably a 200 and i don't know what i did back here i don't think i did anything back here and um i'm just now going to do the ambient get the, i got to get the yellow out on here because it's a little bit orangey a lot of people ask, why don't I do luminosity mask? Well, I find that luminosity mask will actually cause more problems sometimes in color. It does weird things in color. And uh, there might be better luminosity masks than the way I do it. But I don't know what to tell you. So I just do normal mode 90% of the time. Because every time I try and do, um, do a luminosity mask and photo... Oops, shoot. I get out of here. I opened the wrong thing. I'm actually trying to speed up, speed things up. So, uh, you know, I might be making some mistakes. But let's just bring in here a little bit of ambient. Bam, get rid of that shadow right there. Keep a little bit of ambient on the floor. Even I don't mind the glare there. And let's make this a little smaller and zoom in there. A little bit ambient. Let the ambient do the heavy lifting there. Where if you put a flash in there, it is going to be better, truer light colors. But you know what? Let the ambient 
uh, let the ambient do the heavy lifting really is done uh, to save time and on MLS and if you prepare your ambient image you're probably not going to have too many uh, problems with it and it will sure speed up your time okay so let's now it's a little bit bright right here that looks a little better okay and let's go to the ambient shot and uh, that ambient man is that ambient no here's the ambient I thought that was a little bright for ambient so I'm just gonna I've got to let the yellow get the yellow out here and uh, bringing it down a little in exposure right there you can see a little um, I wanted to blow out these windows because you see this orange tag it's a or a, a sticky note um, my agent does that so she knows to uh, those are the windows that are need to be um, either replaced or cleaned there's a real problem with the windows in this house so I blew out a lot of windows so that is something you might do uh, quite often so um, I'm going to and you don't have to do perfect window pulls especially here there may not be much to see so I've got the uh, that image and that image and I'm now going to use my hotkey and bring it into there's as Photoshop what happened let me see here whoops A little technical there we go okay and um, you know it's it's just something that you want to do a balance between getting it good and time so it's really your bill your hill to fight on if you want and uh, you know spend as much or as little time as you can or as you choose to on these images okay so let's I'm not going to align layers so let's just take the flash layer and put it below it there we go and I'm just going to boy that fla flash there's a little bright so I'm just going to go up and no, I'm not going to do it now okay I'm just going to um, paint it in real quick I'm just going to speed up on the rest of this video because I just really wanted it to, to get you to see um, how quick and easy and painless it is whoops I've got to I did a little uh, actually cut the uh, video short and then I changed a few things and I'm back to I have to edit it together so uh, I had a little bit of differences there we go there we go okay and I apologize if I'm out of sync on this image but just bear with me. Here we go. Okay. And if I wanted to, which I will show you, I'm going to now just, um, I'm going to uh, flatten the layers, and I'm just going to do two things. One is I have, actually, I'm going to go backwards, and I'm going to do one more thing here. I just remembered I had a, guess who's there where's Waldo so I'm just going to now um, mask in a little ambient into here and that should get rid of my reflection here just got to remember what layer is what and if you guys are new to layering those are that's some of the benefits of layering right there you can just just do so many wonderful things with it okay so and I want to now I'm going to flatten my layers and I'm just going to go up into here into the um, spot healing brush and I think I can get it with this one click there we go so I took that out let's just see that again spot healing brush which is right up here it's really really handy go back to paintbrush and I'm pretty happy with this so I'm not even going to uh, save it I'm not even going to save the images anymore okay okay there we go okay now let's go back to the next image and uh, a little bathroom here see what we got okay I think I can just use this maybe I could use this as just a full you know I'll use flash layer I don't normally do it and I could get it a little better got a little bit of flashiness up here a little bit of flash over there so I could use this ambient shot I might as well just do it for you to show you how to do it I'm going to use the ambient yellow out and it still needs some white balancing so in bathrooms I use the sink and we usually get it right on and it's pretty close I could actually use this ambient layer but I am going to use the ambient layer there but and uh, you know what I'll do it for you because uh, I'm teaching you here I just got to take out the green for this wall back here the sunlight and the taking out the aqua taking out green 
taking out yellow and taking out blue and that kind of helped there yeah that's not really great so what I'll do is I'll use the ambient and the flash shot so let's go here I'm now going to whoops wrong hotkey okay there we go um, and a good opportunity for me to say hey subscribe to the Rich Baum YouTube channel and uh, wait what's going on it's not coming in Let's see now um, subscribe and uh, please use that Adorama link because it helps motivate me this isn't working at all so let me see here it helps motivate me to produce these free videos and uh, I uh, will probably be doing free videos for some time because I enjoy doing it and uh, I think it's helpful to people let me see here what is going on with this it's not going oh here it's coming I don't know why my computer is. It's this new uh, MacBook Pro laptop. It's just acting a little bit wonky today. I don't know. So I'm not going to auto-align layers. And I'm going to just make a, 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 a um, layer mask. And I'm going to paint 9%. Get this about here. Get rid of this flash sh uh, shine here. There you, go. there you go. That's one thing you do the... Uh, ambient shot and the flash shot for there we go let's get rid of that i don't like that at all okay and one little more piece right up here make it look just a little better there we go and i usually always use ambient for the reflection in the mirror but um for this one i use some uh flash in there too okay next one let's go down here just the laundry room. I could probably just increase the, uh, there we go. And uh, let's see here. I'm just going to take out some saturation, add a little exposure, and a, and a um, what's it called? A, a uh, what is it called? I'm having a brain fart. A graduate, graduated filter uh, layer. Okay. Take out some of the uh, saturation there. Actually make it a little bit blue, and I kind of got it a little bit closer. To, I could do a better job there, but you know what? I always say don't spend too much time on uh, laundry rooms and bathrooms. So Okay, so I've got now, I'm going to do my full bump. Where is it? Full bump right here. And I got some issues up here, and I've got some, I need some um, light in there. So I'm just going to use my ambient for that. And let's go with the ambient yellow out. Let's go with um, let's go with a little more exposure. And let's try a uh, white balance. Let's do it on the white molding down here. Yeah, much better, I think. Let's see the flash. Pretty close. Okay, so I need it for in here. I'm just going to bring it up just a little bit, and I'm going to bring up the shadows just a little bit because I really want this image to help me with uh, let the ambient doing the heavy lifting getting some of that exposure in the bathroom over there now you could easily put a flash in the bathroom I think I did that on another shot but you know it takes a little bit of practice to get shots like that um, good and fast and proper uh, so you know sometimes letting the ambient do the heavy lifting is a good idea okay so let's see here it's coming in Again, my, my computer from yesterday till today is running really slow. There's probably a good explanation for it. So I don't know why it is, but uh, anyway. So let's just now make a layer mask. And I'm just now going to, let's see here, painting in. Oh, you know what? I'm going to um, nine flow. I guess I'm a nine flow, but could probably do a little less. Okay. A little bit of ambient here. Get some shadow love there. There we go. Light in the bathroom. And I think you'll agree. I It's not perfect, but I think it's totally good for MLS. And I don't want to be saying, I'm going to go actually backwards on the ceiling a little bit. There we go. I got a little bit of ceiling fan back in there. So I don't think, I, I don't want to talk down on MLS. Spend as much time or as little time, but I know, like I could have, 
uh, exposed properly for these lights and stuff, but this will work just fine. So again, I think uh, it's fine for here. And I'm going to now go to the second of three. I normally do three uh, shots for the uh, master. And this looks really good right here. Here we go. I'm going to do my ambient shot here. And I'm going to do ambient yellow out. And I'm going to now take out a little more orange, I think. Let's see here. A little more orange. A little more yellow. Good. Okay, so now let's go here and let's take our flash and ambient shot and let's uh, bring in his layers into Photoshop. So, you know, I do three um, shots of masters usually. I'll occasionally do four. And for some agents, I will only do two. But I find three is something that I just do and have been known for. So I'm fine with that. Okay, so a little bit of ambient layer. I actually put a flash I think I did a flash in here. So I'm just going to add on top of that flash. Here we go. And here's a good example of letting the ambient do the heavy lifting right there. Okay. Let's get rid of the ceiling fan shadow, masking some of this ambient in the ceilings. I tend to use um, ambient for my ceilings because I find that they're just about the best. Here's a little bit flashy over here. There we go. And let's get some shadow in here. There we go. A little dimensional to me. There's a window over here, so I'm okay with that there. And masking a little ambient there. There we go. Good. Okay. And I hope I'm showing you. I hope I'm showing you that um, it only takes 30 seconds to do the masking. As long as you got a good flash shot. Like, I think this is a good flash shot. And I could probably deliver this shot alone. Got a little fan, ceiling, a feeling fan photo. Now I got a little ceiling fan shadow there. But uh, you know what? I think it's fine. And I'm just going to now get the ambient out. I'm going to now take out a little bit more of the orange. So the whole point is to prep your, um, really prep your um, ambient shot to match. Like there, you saw what happened there. Much better for uh, masking in. So, um, so yeah, uh, and also these doors, you know, it's funny. I, I usually try and open up the doors. I want to see them, and I'll open it up to camera. Uh, I use the camera ranger so I can, or not camera ranger, but I use tethering, uh, play memories with this camera. By the way, this was an, I think this was an A6400, my new A6400, and it's just the greatest little camera with the Samyang 12 millimeter. So I really do practice what I preach. I do sh shoot that camera. Okay, what's going on? Let's see here. Hit the wrong hotkey. You know, these hotkeys, I'm trying to sell it, sell people on they're taking less time, but sometimes on this shoot, I'm, I think I'm taking more time because I keep making mistakes. So let's just go here. And I could actually deliver this ambient shot, no problem. So there we go. But that's just not like me, okay? A bit of ambient there. Get rid of the uh, flash shadow up there. There we go. And the ambient will bring in a little more texture into here. This is a good example of sometimes the ambient shot's better than the flash shot. There we go. A bit of shadow down there. Oh, okay, good. We're good there. Let's go to the next shot. Okay, we're into this master. Let's see here. Okay. Got my flash shot here. Bring it up just a little bit. Not worried about the window. I'll show you there. Got this closed here. I'm okay with that because there's a house right next door and this window is unshootable because the agent did not want to see the windows in a lot of the house. So let's go with the ambient yellow out. And I'm going to now go again with the white balance. And I'm going to bring it back a little bit to a little bit orange. Or a little bit warmth in there. Whoops. Uh, right about there. Okay. And bring my my volume down. So that's the ambient there. Okay. So let's highlight those two. 
do a hot key. I'm doing command and one, which is what I assigned. Um, I have a, a whole new video on how to program your uh, Lightroom and Photoshop in Mac. I'm only Mac, but uh, a great way to see it. And you can really, uh, you can do some quick saving of time by making your uh, hotkeys. Uh, and I've got command one on my Mac is, um, oh, you know what? I, God, I screwed up again. It's option one for send the layers into Photoshop. And it's option one, command one for, um, for auto aligning layers. So here we should get the, uh, the shot into Photoshop, come back in. And here's the thing too, is if you're not, computer's not fast, I'm spending about 50% of my editing time on the computer. So I recommend everybody go get yourself some SSD hard drive, some RAM, whatever you got to do. Okay, so I'm just going to use my ambient for this window. There we go. And you can see what that was right there real quick. Oh, I was actually standing inside this closet so I would be able to hold my flash where I did. And there I just have closed the closet door. So it might look a little funny to you. There we go. A little bit of ambient. I don't even mind the ambient uh, in the reflection of the glass. That's kind of nice. A lot of people don't like that. So let me see here. Let's just look here. Which one do we like better? Oops. You know what? I think I like that better. So I'm just going to hit X. I'm going to erase what I did. There we go. Okay. And I'm spending a little time teaching you, talking to you, because I don't want to, uh, you know, I, uh, I'll take a little extra time on the, um, oops. Okay, I'll take a little extra time and, and take it off the, uh, the time of uh, the edit of the full edit. So uh, just to tell you some how to teach you, teaching you some things here. Um, so, okay, I wanted a second shot for the master. I usually do two shots for the master. And there, this was the only second viable shot. So I'm going here and I'm going to go and I'm going to get the ambient yellow out. Maybe I should do a little less teaching and, and there we go. Okay, and um, so I do two master bathrooms. Sometimes I do three. Every so often I'll do one, but I usually just have a habit of doing that. I do laundry rooms. I do uh, I do uh, partial bathrooms, little uh, mini bathrooms, you know, like powder rooms. I'll do them. It's just what's expected of me. So I'm going to now do my layer mask, and I know that right there I see myself. So, oh, I got to hit X. Oops. X to uh, paint, go back into paint. Here we go. Masking myself out. There we go. A little bit of ambient there. Ooh, I don't like that color. So I'm just going to go there. A little bit here. There we go. Okay, good. Another example of how absolutely fast it can be just to... Uh, do these uh, shots with doing a um, uh, little bit of flambient, okay? Flash, oh, you know what? Oof, I got a little bit of flash there. I could do this, but you know what? I'm just going to use this image as it is. Take a second or two off my time. Okay, let's go here. I could certainly use this as a, um, a shot. So let me just go here. Okay, and yellow out. Let me bring in, I'll show you, I'll just make it just a little bit better if I add a little bit of ambient to the flash shot. And you know what? You might like it better not adding ambient because some people don't like, especially some agents, don't like, um, they like flashier looking shots. They don't want moody shots. They want poppy shots, okay? So let's try here and let's just bring in a little bit of ambient here. There we go. Bring a little ambient up there. See, it's adding a little dimension to it instead of being quite so flat. There we go. And it's certainly not very, doesn't take very long. So, okay, let's go here now. Um, we got a little workout room, I think. There we go. And I'm going to use the ambient. I think the ambient's probably ready to go. 
Yep. And I'm just going to now do my hotkey. And, um, you know, um, weight rooms are really tricky because um, a lot of agents don't, don't know what to do with weight rooms. They just will not want to really see this material. But I always think it's valuable stuff to see because uh, a guy will look at this and go, oh, I've got a weight room, you know, man cave. And a woman might uh, look at it too and go, I got a woman cave, but uh, I, I don't want to be sexist there. But we guys have some of our own uh, ideas. There we go. And I think a great garage and a workout room might be leaning a little bit towards men, but I'm sure a lot of women want them too. So I'm, I, don't, I hope I don't get I hope I don't get messages for sounding like I'm sexist because I'm not. Okay, so we got that. Oh, actually, let me just uh, close, destroy that. Okay, great. Okay, let's go here. And let's see this bathroom shot. And anyway, I'm sure three quarters of the people have left already because they got tired of hearing um, hearing this uh, video. So, okay, right there. Let's go here. Let's get out the... I just got to prep the ambient shot to look a little more like... Uh, here we go. Yellow and green out. Oh, but then it's getting a little bit of purple there. Okay. And I'm just going to... And actually, you could totally use that as a bathroom shot. But because I'm editing this, and I tend to use um, use my flambient on every image, um, I will do it for you here. Okay. Let's see here. Is this working now? Did I hit the right one? No, I don't think I did. There we go. Got to get that muscle memory for the for the hotkeys. Okay. I think now I'm going into at least 35, 40 minutes. So I must uh, must be going a little slow here. Okay. Let's just do ambient shot out. I'm bringing an ambient in. There we go. Okay. Ambient. There we go. Okay. I'm going to start jamming on these. There we go. Okay, let's go here, simple shot, and I am going to save a minute here. I think I did deliver this a little bit flashy looking, but that's okay. And this is the last shot, I think, inside the house. Let's go here, and I did put one light, one light. I only had two lights with me, so I put a light in this bedroom, or actually I, held, I put the light 200 on a stand right by camera, and I was hand holding the light in this bedroom and I'll let the ambient do the heavy lifting for this one. So let me go here and I've still got the uh, flash in there. I did hand holding. Let me go here and let's just do a little white balance here. There we go. And let's just bring it up. Okay. And um, so, yeah, so you know what? If I can get through with this house in 45 minutes, I'm okay. Uh, without talking to you, I'll see what it is when I look at the time of the video. But without, you know, without talking to you, I could have really saved not quite twice as much time, but I could have saved a lot. Let the ambient do the heavy lifting. It's a little bit yellow, but it's okay. There we go. There we go. Now, i got one little problem here. You might have noticed that I have the 8200 out there. So I'm just going to throw in a little ambient and hide it there. You'll never see that. And you know what? It's not a great view. It's kind of a rainy day out there anyway. So there you go. Finished with that. Okay. And uh, let's see here now. I'm just not even going to deal with the exterior stuff. I just use full bumps on these. And I'll probably just let it go with that. There's one. Another shot, I could do the uh, verticals. Auto align. There you go, a little better. Actually use a little bit more. There you go. A little bit of chromatic aberration there, but eh, it's a little part of that Samyang lens. Okay, that's okay. A little bit uh, green, I think. So anyway, I'm doing all these exterior shots, and again, I can pat them. Oh, and they wanted a shot of the garage. The garage is filled with crap everywhere, except I moved it to here and to here. So all I'm going to do with this, and this is a handheld 
ambient shot and I'm just going to go auto align and eh, good enough okay I got a few more here now I'm going into some twilight so let's just do a real quick twilight so you got to cut me some slack on the amount of time it takes to do this video okay I'm just gonna do one I'm gonna do two twilights for you I'm gonna just prep this one I'm not even gonna talk much about it take out a little bit of the orange because it's a little too orangey there we go now I'm going to do a little trick because I use PPA sky swap and um, it doesn't really work well with clouds like this hold on let me uh, raise up the flow here to a hundred percent get in here and I'm gonna put it on auto mask so it will not go so much on the house so I'm just gonna mask out blow out as much sky as I can and that's probably good okay now I'm going to send it to um, Photoshop and uh, PPA I, I call it the best of the worst because I have yet to find a really great program for Windows I mean for uh, sky replacements but PPA to me it's got its faults big time but overall I think it uh, it works more consistently for me than anything else so I'm just gonna do sky extraction for overcast skies and now I'm gonna do uh, apply overlay with options and that's gonna bring up my sky library okay now I need to go into icons so I can see what I'm doing and I think I'm using this one down here for this twilight shoot let me see here there we go I think I use this one place okay so now I'm just going to bring it here and enlarge it so I don't want to use that there with those trees so right here and and you'll find also skies that work better than others for different types of things so I'm prepping this up now to be my sky replacement and let's just do a little bit bigger okay I'm getting a little bit on the house but what I can do here just to do it I'm going to now hit the sky layer and I'm gonna make it a little bit harder let's go about 80 percent hardness okay okay on there and bring it down here oops nope I don't want it that way I want it uh, less hardness so I want it to mask in if I can there we go so I'm not gonna get too fancy here you can still see it on the roof but that's gonna be okay I think you could probably see it the sky see what it is is the sky the sky replacement program thinks that some other colors it goes basically by color It'd be the same thing if you were doing sky replacement with color range so this is not perfect by any means but you'll get the idea and now I'm going to um, bring it back into Lightroom and show you my finishing but uh, again uh, you know the uh, the sky replacement thinks that sometimes the white is the same color like this tile or this uh, you know these uh, roofing material is going to look almost blue so it will bleed over but a lot of times you you can you're the only one who'll be able to tell okay so let's go into um local area adjustment brush and i'm going to go into twilight color and i'm just going to go into dab 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 oops a little bit heavy so i'm now going to erase a little bit of that okay let's go here nope i'm getting it out of here this is not looking good I think I need less flow oh that's what it is I have too much flow on and I have my auto mask on there we go just give a little bit of punch okay and now I'm going to use my um, medium um, 
vignette. I'm going to now bring it back out of out of local area adjustment. Bring down the there. Bring up a little bit of dehaze and a little bit of vibrance. And there you go. I'm pretty happy. I might make it a little warmer. There we go. And that didn't take too long. I just have to do my verticals. There we go. And there you go with that. And I'll do one more exterior shot. Let's see. Okay. I think this will work. These are a little dark. I usually don't do them quite so dark. So let's do the uh, full bump. And now let's do a little exposure. Okay. Now let's do a white balance and find something. This may be good to white balance on. Here we go. Okay, so now let's lose some of the blue saturation because it's blue in the sky. And, you know, lost a little bit of blue on the other areas, but I'm okay with that. And luminance, let's blow out this blue a little bit. Yeah, right, right there. And we'll do the final one with the... Uh, the local area brushment, uh, brushment, local area brush. I'm just going to do a little bit of exposure and saturation out. Okay, and there we go. And I'm just painting right over the tree. It's not really going to show that much. I'm missing it a little bit, but okay. I'm going to do a new one here to make sure I get all this out because that's the stuff that they that uh, PPA doesn't like. Okay, and this is single exposure. This is, um, yeah, this was my Samyang lens, one-fifth of a second, uh, probably uh, f5.6 and uh, 800, 800 ISO. So, whoops. Uh-oh, wrong one. Hold on a second. I don't know what just happened. So, Come on. There we go. I'm just going to edit this in. I'm a little preoccupied doing this video. It really takes up a lot of extra time. I've made a lot of extra mistakes. So, okay, going back to sky extraction for overcast skies. Apply overlay with options. Go pick a nice sky. The one down there I thought worked pretty good. Again, you will find some skies that work better under certain circumstances and you will learn that it is something only you can really practice with and please understand whatever I'm doing man I tell people if I can do it anybody can do it and you will get better now one thing to think about in um, in doing twilight shots is you really got to be careful not to overdo it okay let's go here watch this now this is where the ref this is basically a refine mask, and this is where I like PPA. Now, it's making the tree darker, but you know what? It doesn't really make that big of a difference, but you can see how well the refine mask squirks. It really, really did a good job. Okay, so now I have to do one other thing. And you may want to double check this when you're doing your own because it may I might have missed something. But you'll notice down here right down in there, it's got sky and that light right there. So all I'm going to do now is go down to the sky layer and just tap it and it's going to take out that sky because it thinks the white is sky, the white of the light. Okay, so that shows you how pretty darn quick it is. And let's go there. So twilights take me about two minutes to edit and about, um, I'm only doing single exposures for all of these. So I don't think you need much more. You really can pull a lot out of a single um, raw image. Okay, let's now go down to the twilight color. And I'm just going to add in a little bit. Make sure I'm down at the right flow. Yep, I'm down there. Okay, a little bit of color. There was no light up there. That's not a real, uh, real balcony. I mean, a real uh, room up there. Okay. Now, let's go and let's make a medium vignette. Let's bring down the exposure just a tad. My agent likes darker exposures. And there you go. Okay, so I did about probably about six twilights for this uh, edit session. 
But uh, I'm going to leave it at this. And so uh, I'm going to take you out. And uh, I just uh, hope you got uh, what you needed to see out of Lightroom. So let's uh, take it back into the studio. So I hope you enjoyed that tutorial and liked the way you saw that I did things. I don't know if you learned as much from me because it was very quick and fast, but this was just meant for you to see how I edit a full house from start to finish. So I hope you liked it. Leave a message in the comments and let me see. Let me hear from you how you liked it or if you didn't like it. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also, be sure to check out Shooting Spaces, a real estate photography podcast, and we also have the blog. And it'd be really, really great if you would use the Adorama link in the show notes. So if you go buy something, you can get a little bit of extra motivation to do these free tutorials. So Rich with Richmond Photography saying, see you later. Shoot better, shoot smarter. Make sure that you get more money and better clients, better projects, and then go spend more time with your family and buy new equipment, whatever. But that's what this is all about. See you later on the next tutorial.